Yeah, so I, I actually rejected it initially. And normally when they send you auditions, they don't give you, there's like confidentiality. So they don't yeah. give you so much clarity on what the show or the sh movie is about. And uh, and I just remember hearing the name and I was like, yeah. guys, I'm, I'm not doing it. And then we had a back and forth conversation. And then they said Idris Alba. And I said, yeah, but you know, if, you like, if I'm going may, to maybe represent- Maybe if Idris Alba is in it, I might <laughs> no, do one honestly, of that. Okay, nobody move. <laughs> no, that wasn't the case. But but then but then obviously they told me you're not a terrorist. And yeah. I said, fine, because I actually have you're, my- You're not, your brother and yeah. your cousin will be, <laughs> but you are on the good side. <laughs> I find it really <clears throat> weird to go to barbecues now because you must know Hatim Matar. No, I don't. Okay, maybe Hatim Matar makes my face maybe the oh, best yes, brisket. Of course, of course, I know him. Yeah, in the him. world, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I'm I'm not just saying that because I'm his friend. Uh, was it the Matar farm? Matar farm, bro. Yeah, yeah. And I I was there recently, and I go there anytime I can. And sometimes I just try and steal food when I know that he's going to be cooking anyway. Just happen to pretend to be in the area. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I always feel weird when I go to other barbecues now because I feel like I'm cheating on him. Yeah. And also because, Betrayal. yeah, but he makes, have you tried his brisket? I don't think I have. But I've always wanted to. I've, I love like the stuff that I've seen looks amazing. <laughs> A lot of my friends are I will invite you. with him. Yeah. So. <laughs> I will invite yeah, you yeah. To, to this one as forget, well. Forget but the barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, we'll do that one. Um, absolute pleasure to have you, Thank have you, you in the me. house. You're a man of many, many, many talents, a multifaceted individual. Thank you. We share a lot in common. We'll get to that. I know you're a bit nervous when you were like, oh, <laughs> why do we know? Um, your coach, because you used to play football, right? Yeah. Your coach at Fulham, was it Daniel Jacka or Kenny Bremner? Or was had it, they gone? No, they've gone. It was uh, Vic Bettinelli. So I had a trial at Fulham. Okay. Uh, two trials. Most uh, Park. Vic, Vic Bet uh, Bettinelli. Uh, no, the training ground was... I can't remember exactly. Motsburg, where it must have been Motsburg Park. Probably, yeah. yeah. And uh, actually the goalkeeper, one of the goalkeepers of Chelsea now, I think he's the third or the fourth. His name is Marcus Bettinelli. Okay. Uh, I used to train with him then. And his father was the head of the goalkeeping academy. So that was the coach. Vic. The center of excellence. Yeah. See, because I have a football background too. And that's why yeah. I know Fulham very well. Okay, I spent so Vic, most yeah. of my, my youth and my career there. Um, and uh, yeah, hearing that... It's kind of strange being no, like meeting people and knowing that they literally walk the same steps as us. Because obviously, you used to go to Bishop's Park right next to the stadium and mm. you'd go to the stadium and all that stuff. Yeah, it's really strange there. from, yeah, from different parts of the world, but you've actually walked the same yeah. steps of us and it's so far away. Also, being a goalkeeper, now I'm not a goalkeeper because mm -hmm. I, I liked like touching the ball. Like you, <laughs> like, like I enjoy playing outfield. I could you play did? outfield, but uh, for some reason I just stuck to being in goal. But um, it's you're like the best friend to ever have. Yeah. Nobody wants to be goalkeeper. Yeah. And it's always like, oh man, we need a keeper. It, like especially outside when you're playing. Like having a friend. We had one friend. He was Iraqi, and he was an amazing goalkeeper. And I've heard about your goalkeeping skills as well. By the way, I'm not going to tell you who from. That will come later. But having a good goalkeeper was literally like having Iron Man in your Avengers yeah. team. Because there's always there's always people who'd be like, all right, I'll go in goal and stuff like that. But having someone who just wants to be a goalkeeper is like finding a, a black diamond. It's like the rarest thing, right? Mm. What, what made you decide to be a goalkeeper? It's actually funny because, uh, so I always wanted to play outfield initially. Um, I started actually with Captain Jamil doing like my sporting, started tennis in El Wasl. And then I did, uh, I stopped at Wasl, then I started doing like um, MMA with Captain Jamil. I think most of the locals yeah. would know him. Um, and then, so we go to summer holidays as a family to London, and we have a property in Ireland near Dingle. And uh, in our garden there, we were playing football, me and my brother Omar. And obviously, we had a goal there, and he, you know, needed a goalkeeper to take shots on. Mm. And I didn't want to be in goal. And then he's like, just go in goal. And, I loved Space Jam. I forgot to mention oh, cool. basketball. I loved Space Jam back in the day. I was a huge fan. I used to play basketball all the time. So yeah, I guess the coordination hand and you know ball coordination, mm. once I moved from basketball to football, I was very uh, quick, you yeah. know, and, and it, you know, it just got to me naturally. So That's crazy. You know, a lot of 
very famous outfield players started off as goalkeepers. Mm. Believe it or not, Ronaldo, R9, he was a goalkeeper. I um, didn't know that. I think I heard Maradona started off as a goalkeeper. Like a, a lot of like really skillful players and backwards as well have gone back. A lot of players that played out, like I started as a goalkeeper as well. Mm. When I first started, there was something about being the last line of defense. Mm. Like you don't get much happening when you're in goal. But when something but when happens, you do, yeah. Everything rides on but, you, right? But you still feel underappreciated. That's what's right. Funny, though, always, yeah. always. So I have, yeah. Unless you save a penalty. <laughs> exactly. Otherwise, that's what you're saying. expected to yeah, do that's that. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. But like, I, I have some friends who are like very big footballers. They played for Manchester United. They played for Arsenal, Man City. They all live here actually now. Yeah. Um, but they're defenders. So Mikael Silvestre, Bakari Sanya, all these guys. And Silvestre, actually, we played. Uh, there was a tournament uh, in Expo a couple of years ago. Yeah. Uh, he was on my team. I was with Bak oh, Bakri no Sanya's team. Yeah. Uh, you're on Bak's team. Yeah. So he, he was, <laughs> okay. I was behind Sylvester. Yeah. yeah, and they were saying the same thing. They were like, and I kind of asked him, I was like, how does it feel, even though like you're in such a position where you're the last line of defense and so much relies on you, but just one, you know, fancy striker with the gelled hair who gets a couple of goals every day, like they get so much more attention yeah. than what's happening there, even though your job essentially... It's harder than theirs, right? I guess they all play their part, you know, but yeah. uh, I don't know. I enjoyed it. I, I mm. you know, I, I actually in high school, I used to play first half goalkeeper, second half left mid okay. and score. Nice. So like, you <laughs> so know, you had I had the capability it. of going on. Sometimes I would think, you know, what if I had maybe would have my career have flourished if I was a player rather yeah. than goalkeeper? Because goalkeeper, I had an issue with my height. Yeah. You know, uh, but anyway, I had I had a great time, you know, while my football career lasted, mm -hmm. and um, I think uh, where where my life has fallen into place right now is the best place I'm at, and I think everything happens for a reason. And hundred uh, percent. And and I'm here, and I'm very happy. It's really weird that you say that because I I was talking to my wife um, the other day, just that you know the the nighttime pillow talk, and I was like, babe, you do realize that if I took one bus differently, exactly, yeah. We wouldn't have our beautiful kids. Yeah. You wouldn't be married to your handsome husband. <laughs> you wouldn't be such a lucky woman. No, but literally, you take one... If yeah. one thing had changed in, in your life, the way you took something wrong, you yeah. wouldn't be sitting here now. That's such it's a... It's crazy when you think about it's it. It's crazy. That way. That's what they tell I think you. about that a lot, actually. That's yeah. why when I um, do time travel, I'm not going to mess with the past because apparently <laughs> they say that if you <laughs> if you mess with something in the past, yeah, right, yeah. it could change everything. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I'd come back, there'd be dinosaurs on Sheikh Zahid <laughs> and stuff like that. So I'm going to be very careful with that. Another thing that you do, um, we can go back and forth and you can actually yeah, channel I'm, this however you I, want because I'm, it's... I'm easy, yeah. Again, you're like me. You've lived like 18 lives in one. So you have so many different stories where a lot of people just have one kind of story where they're like, I kind of did this line. You decided. Which is fine. I guess everybody has their yeah, own. Yeah, of course. You know, of course. Why way, do you. Uh, mine kind of. We'll get into all the Why do you do so many different things? Is it because. And I'm asking you not to be humble now because I have to be not humble by saying the same thing. I feel like, and I've always felt like, that I pick up things so quickly. And I'm quite multi-talented in so many different things that I do it and then I get good at it. And then I'm like, there's no challenge in this now. I'm good at it now. I'm like, I need something else now. It's like ADHD in my brain is saying, you've, you've done enough of this now. You, you need to find something else to challenge you. What, why do you do so many different things? I guess, uh, you know, to be honest with you, timing destiny um how whatever, whatever you want to call it but i mean like with football i was very very committed from a young age until i was about 20 but then i was dealing with a few things uh with the club and and realistically speaking i kind of like made a decision for myself to not pursue my football career post 20. i stopped for seven years and then signed my first professional contract with Al Ain. Wow. um and why i went back is another story but you know I guess your own decision making, you know, you sit back and analyze, you know, what you want to do. And um, at that time, you know, had I stayed, maybe things would have been different. But again, just like you said, you take that one turn, that one decision, and then your life turns, mm. you know, dramatically into another way. And to be honest with you, I'm happy with every decision I made, the ups and especially the downs, because where I am right now, I'm, I'm extremely happy in, in every way. 
uh, yes, I'm not anywhere near where I want to be, but um, you know, I see the vision, um, not just in the sense of success and financial gain and career, but also um, the person I'm evolving to become. You know, the way I, the way I kind of like speak to myself, the way I notice my behavior is changing, the way I notice certain behaviors that I did in the past, where I'm, you know, mm. I'm I'm fine tuning myself to be a better version every day, as opposed to how I used to be. So I think. Again, it's all decision making, and I'm, you know, I'm here where I am now, and I'm glad with all the decisions, even mm. the wrong ones, to be honest, because mm. they're honestly what make you uh, grow. Uh, they're like a catalyst yeah, for, for your sure. growth if you kind of, if you're uh, aware of them. If you're yeah, aware yeah, yeah, of yeah. them, exactly. In those seven years, were you still training very hard, or did you uh, take not a really? Because you basically just said to the kids that, "Hey guys, the best way to do it is to yeah, just, don't do that. Yeah, don't do it. Lays <laughs> don't. off." And then just come back seven <laughs> years later, and then you get a contract. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Uh, no, so I, I was, so I was studying in London, and obviously, um, for me, the most value I got of university was mainly like living abroad. Mm. You know, although I knew London is familiar to me, I'm half English, uh, but you know, it was, it was the whole independence part of it and living in uh, London. But um, obviously, I missed football. Like mm. I was playing every day for like nearly 10 years. So I played like Sunday League. I played a bit Ryman League, you know. Um, I played a little bit with Met Police. I played a little bit with um, Hackney Wick. Hackney Wick and Hackney Wick. Which Wick. is, uh, yeah. No, very yeah, well, yeah. 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 And, um, and yeah, with the university team or whatever, but I never really committed. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just living in London. So I was focusing on my uni and, and yeah, enjoying living in London. What were you well. studying at the time there? Business management. Okay. Yeah. Finish is that. that something that you chose to do or is it that something no, like just we were forced to do as, a, yeah, it was as being a, an Arab boy? There was no force, to be yeah. honest, but it was just like, you know, just, you know, to have, to have it. You know, it was a handy thing to have. You need to have your bachelor's. And what did you want to do? I wanted to generalize something, you know, have a generalized... Uh, degree business management was you know straightforward to mm. me i thought that would be the one that would fit and uh, and yeah yeah but were you academic uh, and you wanted to do that because some people like for me you put me in business management and i'm standing on top of the uni wanting to jump like for me i did uh, yeah, a master's I, I, in sports science with you, so people learn very, in different ways i think yeah. for me i'm more i'm way more practical in 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 the approach of how i learn things mm. Um, that's maybe also why to answer your question, I've done so many different things and, you know, today I'm in investments. I worked in investments in London Did I learn more about investments in uni, as opposed to working in Mayfair for a family office. Of course not. I learned, yeah, yeah. In, you know, practically in the office. So, um, so yeah, but people learn differently, I guess, you know, that's crazy. Now yoga. Yeah. There's a lot of, <laughs> why do you make that face? Yeah, <laughs> Yes, what do you yeah. mean? Like, tell me why you make that face. I'll let you take over from here. No, because I mean, it's it's not common for an Emirati, you know, man to be teaching yoga. Um, I mean, it, it is picking up now in the community that a lot of, you know, men are doing yoga, practicing yoga amongst practicing the local, though. practicing yoga, doing it amongst the local community as well. Um, but the reason why I'm smiling is because of my own story within it. Yeah. And... Uh, to be honest with you, I decided to teach yoga uh, because of the value it had given to me. Um, so it was about maybe around five years ago, five years ago. Um, I wasn't in a really good state mentally. And, um, you know, I just, I just, you know, basically had tunnel vision. And as I started to practice yoga, yoga literally morning, every morning at 7 a.m., it started to like, you know, make me feel lighter. I started to, you know, understand things better. You know, I started to appreciate things more. Um, and obviously that goes along with your religion as well. Mm. Um, I was going to say that. Yeah, was of be course. It. So I'm saying all that, but, you know, I had that all my life, but then I had to get into that to find yeah. that. Yeah. And yoga, again, there's another uh, misjudgment on it that is like a religion. And that's mm. why people frown upon it when it's but not. It is a it's, bit culty, though. It can be. It can be. But it depends on your own perspective. But then perspective so is CrossFit. But you know, exactly. you know, you know what I mean? But I exactly. Mean like, like people yeah. go swimming, he's doing CrossFit. Yeah, people yeah, yeah. are doing squats, he's doing CrossFit. Yeah. But for me, yoga is just like, you know, it's 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 a healthy practice to be more aware of your breathing, to calm your mind, medit meditate more often, you know, to you know to fluctuate the, uh, to still the fluctuations in your mind, for example. And uh, it's a body movement, so it's good for your body, you know, make the blood flow. And then the, the messaging around it, depending on how you take it, 
is actually good for you. It's like it's, it's healthy depending on your perspective. You know, some people dive too deep into it and then turn it into that. But I, I never looked at it at that. And also, so with an, me, yeah. and I look at things with an open mind as well. So when I did do my yoga teacher training, and a big part of, you know, where we come from and our religion is tolerance. You know, so we have to be open to everything. And we should be, you know, where that's that's what life is. You know, it's different cultures, different religions, belief systems, etc. So we should be open-minded to to everyone. And and when we did the teacher training, so it was art of um, art of teaching, which is you know how we teach. Doing then we were doing our actual yoga practices, and then there was there was a class on Buddhism. So we've been getting taught Buddhism. So I was, you know, it's just it's just good to know. Uh, you were like, uh, and Buddha didn't astaghfirullah. And Buddha didn't astaghfirullah. <laughs> so yeah, I was just I was just yeah. learning. I mean, uh, as you do, you know, on your YouTube or whatever. But yeah, yeah. in the actual place in this island called Kopangan, which is a beautiful place in Thailand, I was there for two months. I had an, an amazing experience. Mm. You know, I met so many amazing people, and um, I think traveling and being open minded and and sharing where you come from and and mm. being open enough to absorb where you know the differences of other other people. Is, uh, is a very positive thing, to be honest. So, My one thing with yoga, yeah. and we're going to start doing yoga together. Because yeah, I do should, jiu-jitsu. I'm teaching tomorrow at 7 a.m. Uh, if you want to come. I have jiu-jitsu at 10. Should I, should I really do it before jiu-jitsu? 7, 7 a.m., come. Let's, let's talk. You after, should come. Because my thing is, okay, jiu-jitsu is amazing. It's great. I have not one bad thing to say about jiu-jitsu. I do. My bad thing about jiu-jitsu is I'm 42 now. Mm. And although I still think I'm 21. Where do you do jiu-jitsu? Henzo Gracie. Okay. Yeah. You know uh, Tenth Planet? Yes. It belongs to a friend of mine. Oh, no way. Had, yeah. That's why we have a house in Ireland. He's, he's Emirati Irish. Okay. His mom's best friends with my he mom. He comes from the Eddie Bravo school, huh? Yeah. Sakharallah, <laughs> sakharallah. Henzo Gracie. I'm not uh, going to Tenth Planet. Um, but, yeah. but shout out Tenth Planet. Because I do no gi as well. It's kind of funny that you say that Tenth yeah. Planet because I don't do gi at all. Okay. I, I'm just strictly no gi jiu-jitsu. Dude, I'm waking up some days... And like my body is facing that way and my neck is facing that yeah. way, bro. Yeah. You're already in a yoga yeah. position. Br- dude, the pain that I go through, like my body's like, listen, you need to either really up those vitamins or you need to do something to do, balance it do, out. Do yoga. It's actually really good for the... I agree with you, you know. but I tried yoga a couple of times. And the thing that really put me off, and I'm going to be straight up and yeah. honest about this. I'd go there. There'd be maybe seven women... Nothing wrong with uh, women being there. I, I'm not one of those guys that like, oh, this is a woman's class. I don't want to do it because it makes me like a, yeah. a pom or whatever. But <laughs> the guy teaching the class, just the over... Yeah, yeah. Like no, you no, you no, cannot look, be again, at that much peace no, to be honest, when, when you're no, talking to, to me. You, look, like, I, it's like, dude, please calm down. I, I just want to stretch. Thing. Don't tell me that my 19th chakra is farting <laughs> out air right now <laughs> and the universe is... Like, I get it. And I'm very spiritual and I'm a happy guy. But sometimes they take it so far that I'm like, look, am I here for theater or am I here to yeah, stretch? Yeah, no, I've, I've been in the same place. So, like, even, even every teacher does it, you know, their own way. Um, I'm nowhere near that kind of a style. Mm. Um, actually, my, my classes are, they're quite fun, actually. They're, so it's called, there is a bit of spirituality and it's, it's with poetry. Okay. So it's called The Journey Flow. Okay. Because we're all on, and yoga played a huge part of my journey in my life and a huge transition, etc. So I decided to call it The Journey Flow because we're all on our own journeys in life. So you've created your own class. My own, your yeah, own my syllabus, own, your my, own, exactly. Okay. So it's called The Journey Flow because we all have our own journeys. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we all have similar qualities we need to work on to live a more content, happy life. For example, being more patient, um, um, more forgiving, more self-loving, more present, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This list goes on. Mm. How to absorb change, da 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 da. So every practice, every class will be based off one of these qualities, and every quality will has a poem. Has a poem. Okay. So we'll start off. I'll, I'll explain what I just explained and say today is on um, presence, being more present. And then, you know, we'd have like kind of like, you know, uh, like soft kind of, you know, engaging music for that theme okay. initially where you're kind of doing a guided meditation on presence, being more present, etc. cetera. Um, it would be like a guided meditation. Volume goes down. I'm a big house fan, deep house. Okay. So then I switch the playlist <laughs> okay. and then you're having a lot of fun. Volume goes up. Very good music. Okay. And uh, and yeah, and then we flow. It's fast-paced, hot room, so it's it's not like so it's like Bikram. 
Uh, it's hot yoga. It's hot it? yoga, but it's Bikram is one. You know Bikram story, it's, it's right? It's the same sequence, right? Have you, yeah, you know yeah, Bikram yeah. story? Yeah. <laughs> no, but Bikram is the same sequence. Mine is different every time. Okay. I don't write my sequence, so it's it just flows but within the But it's hot yoga. Like you're going it's, in it's, there. It's in a hot room. Okay. Or it's in a room with the air conditioning off. So okay. it, w- it will be hot. And then towards the end, house music goes down. You're in the Shavasana surrender pose, resting. And then the poem comes in. You get up. Close your eyes. We do breath work. Who writes Salam these poems? Alaykum. Do you write? I do. Yeah, yeah. You I write do. them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, are you that. saying them, or are they? Recorded? I'm saying. No, no. I'm saying them. Yeah, it's all live. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a very interesting experience for me because yeah. one of two things is going to happen. It's in Samadhi every one, mo- every Monday and Thursday at seven a.m. Okay. So one, I'm coming. either going to not be able to stop laughing because <laughs> I know you. Know, by then, I'll, I, I don't have think known it's going to happen. A lot of my friends said the same thing. Cracking up, and you'll be like, "Be grateful for the wind." I'll be like, "Yeah, when the here." Just, I'm, I'm going to die here, dramatic. bro. It's dramatic, yeah, yeah. but not that dramatic. I'm in, I'm in Archer, Genghis Khan pose, <laughs> and you're telling me be grateful. I'm grateful I'm not falling on the floor, bro. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so either yeah. that's going to happen, or I'm going to be so confused because the way you described it, that's like 15 different emotions that you've taken someone through because you, know, you have the Yeah, yeah, the calm, it's an experience. Then you exactly. have the house it's, it's, it's a, trip. It's then an you have the, yeah. the poem. So that's very interesting. That yeah. would be something cool to do for sure. Yeah, Is it going to help me with my 90-year-old body? It should. Yeah, it should. It should. And you have to be consistent at it, like anything in life. So you can't no, come hey, once bro, and look, expect an answer or a if result. If it's free, I'm there every day, bro. Yeah. <laughs> if I have to, you can come if in I have to sign up, bro. I don't think I can commit <laughs> to that. You see, the way that my, my account my set up, one. I have to make a transfer. And <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. No, interesting. How, from the, because I always ask this to not just locals, but Arab friends and all that stuff. Now, being an Arab, and I'm talking specifically the men in your life, when you say to them, this same thing, okay, so I put you into the pose of gratitude and then I read a poem to you. Your Arab local, maybe not traveled as much as you have, so have a different view. But, you know, growing up in, in uh, the Emirates and coming back to the Emirates, we are so, and I say we, because I feel like this is home, I couldn't picture living anywhere else in the world, Yeah, are so more advanced than the rest of the world think that we are in both what we know, in both, like, it's very rare now that any of my local friends, I'll say to them something, they're like, what is that? You know, they know about Mm. all these different parts of the world and what's happening in the world. Like, Dubai is so cosmopolitan and so mixed that they, if they haven't been there, at least know a friend who has and they know the experience, right? So what are your immediate friends and family telling you when you say, I'm going to be a yoga teacher and I'm going to bring peace I and, mean, yeah, but, but again, I don't do it in that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's not, I'm going to bring peace that, That's well, not my approach, and, yeah. you know, but uh, there's a split. I mean, to be honest with you, just to answer what you're saying is like when I started, the, you know, I started it because, you know, it's not for a bi- any business reason. It was just something I enjoyed doing and I could teach it. And if I can do that in a class where people could follow and they can wake up early in the morning and start their day doing something great for themselves. Great. That's a good mm-hmm. influence. Right. So. I'm doing something good for my morning and I'm sharing that with someone else. Amazing. Um, I just wanted to change the conversation on, on yoga in general. Um, and I wanted, I wanted also, um, because of my story in yoga and, and why I decided to start teaching yoga, I wanted people to, specifically Arab men, to be able to like speak up, not saying, you know, to try and get attention mm. and start talking about you know, their emotional life or whatever. But if you're not, because right now mental health is a really big, big conversation. Yeah. And, and, and especially in this part of the world, you're kind of like, it's like drilled in you not to speak up. And, and we live this fairy tale perfect life. But the reality mm. is that's not true. And I think it's very normal and okay to speak up about, you know, things that aren't okay. You know, I'm not telling you to advertise or broadcast it to the world. But if you have people close to you in your life, those people that are close to you in your life, want to be there for you and mm-hmm. if you stay silent you know they cannot share that love yeah. that they have for you or or you know they or can't help in any way or help in any way so it's important to not just men women too i guess but like to to trust that people that are in your circle that love you mm. want to be there for you and if there's something wrong talk about it mm. you know i'm not saying to broadcast to the world i i personally don't do that but while we're having this conversation I have no issues talking about that. Like I went through a situation in my life where I wasn't in the best mental state. You know, I wasn't in a good place, and that's also okay. You know, um, but yeah. What was that? That 
Are you, can you talk about it or? Yeah, really? no, I'd prefer not to. Okay, great. But yeah, I when, guess when the cameras go I, off. No, I guess no. To be honest with you, I guess it was like, again, I was a bit unaware. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't one specific thing, uh, but I think it was. It was just like constant actions of of me um, that was like piling up into a snowball effect of me then not appreciating who I actually am or who I've become mm. as opposed to who I actually wanted to be and the potential that I actually have. Mm. So I, I kind of drifted away from, you know, uh, wh who I believed I actually was mm. and what I, you know, believe that I'm capable of. I was too far away from that uh, spectrum. So I think, um, I think, yeah, I woke up. No, I hear that because I went through something like that recently. And I don't think it's ever something that you stop doing, especially as you grow as men, where I was just feeling like, even though I haven't been particularly bad to anyone or I haven't, you know, effed anyone over or all that stuff, I it just felt like I'm not the best version of myself that I could be. And I was very aware of that. I was like, man... I could really be so much better. Yeah. And it's not necessarily like big things. It's just little things like procrastinating on certain little things where there wasn't any reason for me not to do it. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I'd just be like, oh, later or, or do that stuff. And it's, and I, I don't think as you start growing and as you, you start doing, and especially with kids, because, you know, I heard something that was very relevant to me. It's like, to these guys watching, um, the guy who's on the mic, who's ha 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 ha, whatever, that's, who I am for them. To my wife, I'm the husband who's strong and, you know, who's always there and loving. And to my kids, I'm the father who's educating and helping and loving. And, and, and it's like, once you take all of that, like who's left for you? Yeah. Like, and I, but and I are think, you aware of that? Yeah. But I think it's also, I think it's okay. It's, it's good to be hard on yourself, especially as a man, you know, we carry a lot of responsibility in the end. Um, whether you're married, have kids or mm. going towards that direction. Um, I mean, that's the essence of life in the end, you know, you know yeah. get married, have a family and, and build upon that. So, um, you know, it's important to be hard on yourself and be more driven. And, but again, my whole point about it is, is that if you're really at a place where you're affected and you, there's like, a, you're frozen, you mm. know, like you, you're, you're finding difficulty to come out of, you know, to continue this drive, you know, to, um, you, then I guess you'd probably need to then kind of like sit back and be like, okay, there's people around me that care about me, that love me. Um, let me, let me talk to them. They would want to be there, you know, mm. just as me, for example, if I have a friend that I know that there's something going on with him or her, I would more than anything want to know that. So I can then, then I feel like useless, you know, well, that's like, not, that, that's not normal though. You do realize that, right? Yeah. And one thing that my wife has started to really drill into my head and some, you know, close friends who have been in the industry, fighters and stuff for like the older ones, uh, they said, stop expecting everyone to be like you. Like, just because you'd want to help everyone, just because you go out of your way to do things for people, just because you prioritize other people. 100%. And I've been affected really badly by that, by yeah. people have done some snaky moves and yeah, I've been yeah, like, yeah. I've been like, Brother, uh, brother, uh. like I literally just what's helped that? you last week. Yeah, like what's that, brother? Yeah, like, no. should I really have to explain to you that that's a fucked up move? Like, that's yeah. not on what you're doing. Like, and, and and she's like, like you really need to be careful because the majority of the world isn't like that. And with the, to the point that I'm gonna make is, you have to have someone very close to you, and he has to be a, a certain type of person, because believe it or not. Most people will judge you. And I know they yeah, say true. don't judge, but if you tell your peers, you really find out who your friends are when you ask for help and they either mock it or don't take it seriously. Or they, they look at, I've, I've done it a few times for people that I thought were on the level. And I've, I've noticed they looked at me different after I was vulnerable with them. Yeah, but I guess you just, you, Either way, mm. you know, if you do it, if you open up to the right person or the wrong person, it's, it's, if you end up doing it to the, with the wrong person, it's a lesson, right? Mm. You, you start to realize it's, it's, you know, you cut ties early on. Like for example, if somebody messes, messes you over, for example, which happened to you, it's happened to me, it's happened to you, it's happened to me, it's going to keep happening. You just, yeah. you know, learn and it's like, a, it's like a school but fee. That's what you said. As my brother Ali, who's a big mentor of mine, to be honest with you. 
uh, he calls it like a school fee. You know, it's something that you know, it's 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 something that you need to learn from your own life, Don't from your own me mistake. About school fees. I got two kids yeah. in Dubai for the school, bro, and it's August, bro. Where school fees are coming, man. Yeah. So, but I, but but when those things happen and people do that, I think. And this is also where for forgiveness plays a huge role. And I'm not talking about, oh, be forgiving. And I say it in the sense that like when you don't forgive, and when I say forgive, not like, I'm sorry, okay, good, and yeah. walk away. When you don't actually accept. properly forgive yeah. and accept and learn how to let go of it, you build resentment mm. within you. And that person's living on their own life. Yeah, and your resentment's and being... And you're, and you're, so I think it's, people, it's yeah. so unnecessary to like have like I've got no matter how many no matter what happens like I I just I don't have enemies mm. you know I'm just aware of what people are capable of. I'm the same, of, but the point but that you made enemies. the point that you made is gonna continue happening. Yeah. So where is is there a line where you're like, right, that's it, like Ross from Friends, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> is there a point where you're like, I'm not gonna help anyone ever again, man? I'm done. I'm just gonna live my life, get on with it, and just and other people are gonna suffer because of that. Because there has to be, because so many times I've been like, no. I'm going to continue to be helpful. I'm going to continue to support. But then I'm going to continue. And then, even if no one changes, at least I did my part. But during this time, I'm getting trampled on. But then we have, and we're doing, again, we're doing all these things to be the best person we can for God. God is mm -hmm. watching. God is watching you do everything you do. And, you know, if somebody does you wrong, and I can, I get it. At sometimes you get frustrated and go like, you know, what, I can't do this anymore. Just a disappointment, bro. It is, it is. I get it. But again, if you, if your perspective is towards, you know what, I'm doing this for, for God. Yeah. I'm doing this for the people that are closest to me. I'm not gonna not forgive this person, hold resentment, and have bad energy because then when I come home to my family, to my, mm. my wife, my kids, my brothers, my whatever, my my parents, they don't. Feed off mm. that, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, they they they're they're getting a good version of me, and I think that's where you have to like, you know, know what the purpose is. And when you're doing things, it's not just I'm doing this. I'm doing something good for you, just for you to be mm. happy. Yes, I want to do things to make people happy, make myself happy, and also to make, you know, God know that mm. I'm I'm doing everything with the cleanest of intentions. It's difficult, bro. It is. It, yeah. it, you know what makes it more difficult when they don't try and hide it, dude. Like, yeah. at least be sneaky and smart about it and go behind my back in a way that you've covered all your bases. Mm. Like, don't do it in such a sloppy way mm. that is in my face because then I feel more disrespected. I'm like, if you respected me, you would have hidden the sly things that you did. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But I'm like, yeah, I guess I, I do let things go very, like, easy. I can compartmentalize a lot of things. It's just a shame. Mm. And it really is a shame, like you said, when you genuinely do something out of love and not, I'm not doing this to gain this from it. But see, I mean, at least acknowledge that I was the one who did this. So maybe you shouldn't snake me. Yeah, and yeah. maybe snake the other guy who didn't do anything for you. And, you know, it's I guess difficult. that's on them and you do what you need to do to, you know, to be at peace mm. and live a, live a happy life. I guess if you keep you know, dwelling on that, then you're dwelling. I just need more house music in my life. That's yeah. what that's what you're saying. Oh, that that's too. the bottom line, right? That too. My I'll yoga. send you my Spotify. <laughs> yeah, you right? Put it up here. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Is there any reason of Mondays and Thursdays? Or mm, Not really. Monday mainly is to start the week. Because they're important days in, uh, yeah, in our religion as yeah, well, right? Yeah. This, I'm not sure why, to be no, honest. No, the prophets used to fast Monday and Thursday okay. and, no, yeah, and these two that's, days. It's yeah, not, yeah. not because of that, no. Monday is because it's the start of the week. Yeah. Thursday was before Friday, so you can go was, out and party yeah, on Friday. Yeah, Friday. Friday, I wanted. I honestly wanted to have my Friday. Yeah. And anyway, I also have work. I go to the office yeah. every day, so it's uh, it just it just worked out that way. To be mm. honest with you, but Monday, I wanted to have Monday seven a.m. start the day, nice. start the week. Yeah. And again, is this something that you're just kind of still figuring out yourself, or is it something that you want to take further and maybe? You talk about yoga. Yeah, yoga. No, it's just something I just I do it, I enjoy it, I share it, and and, and it's not something I'm planning on scaling in any way. If but it if happens it scales, organically, yeah. yeah I, honestly, I have I have uh, other priorities in on my mm. hands right now that uh, I think needs more attention. To be honest, and okay, let's get on to hijacked. Yeah. Not the best name to pick for a show coming out of the Middle East. <laughs> yeah, I actually I actually rejected it initially when the agent offered it to no, me. It, yeah, because you so thought you were going to be one of the guys in the plane going yeah. typecast. Everybody move, <laughs> Mohammed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I actually rejected it initially, 
And normally when they send you auditions, they don't give you, there's like confidentiality. So they don't yeah. give you so much clarity on what the show or the sh movie is about. And, uh, and I just remember hearing the name and I was like, yeah. guys, I'm, I'm not doing it. And then we had a back and forth conversation and then they said Idris Alba. And I said, yeah, but you know, if, you like, if I'm going may, to maybe represent... Maybe if Idris Alba is in it, I might <laughs> no, do one honestly, of that. Okay, nobody move. <laughs> no, that wasn't the case. But but then but then obviously they told me you're not a terrorist. And yeah. I said, because I actually have you're, my... You're not. Your brother and yeah. your cousin will be, <laughs> but you are on the good side. <laughs> um, there is actually an Arab terrorist in yeah. it, but most of them were foreign. But I, anyway, I had like I have like a couple of points as an actor that mm. I wouldn't do. And, um, and yeah, being an Arab terrorist is one of them. So I guess... Uh, yeah, thank God that wasn't the case yeah. because hijack was an amazing opportunity for me. That's I think dope, sure. uh, not just for me. I think for for UAE and Middle Eastern cinema. I think um, you know me being able to be on an international TV series like that, number one on Apple TV globally, working with Idris Alba and all the other actors of you know that high caliber. Um, you know, just proves for me. You know, because I love doing film, and I'd love to pursue that as much mm -hmm. as I can. But then. If I can show anyone that has a similar dream to me or any kind of dream that you can get up and do it, mm. it's all about getting up and trying and then you can achieve, right? If you believe and you try, mm. you achieve. Um, not all the time, but you have to try. Mm. You know, you can't just sit back and be like, yeah, there's no film industry here. Yeah, there's no this. I can never work in Hollywood. I can never. It's literally just you're, we're living in 2024. There's your emails. You can contact anyone from anywhere in the world package up something together. Mm. And that's literally what happened with me. Like I I stopped from Al Ain um, and then I decided to go back to London to finish uni. And uh, when I was there, I was thinking, what did I do in my life? Because I did about six movies and TV shows all together. Mm. And um, I thought, what was it that I did in my life that made me feel like I was in my element, just like football did? And acting, you know, made me feel that. So I was like, you know what? Let me give acting a go while I'm doing my business. And so I got, I signed with my agency, you know, Creative Screen Management. And uh, the first audition they sent, which doesn't usually happen because normally you do like 20 auditions and you get one role. Yeah. was the first audition they sent and it was hijack. And, and thankfully I got the role. And, and yeah, I think, uh, I think we're in a great place in the UAE now in the film yeah. industry. I just finished a TV show called Khattaf. Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll get very, to that. I still want to talk a bit more about Hijack, but we'll yeah. get to Khattaf. Yeah, so no, Hijack for me, um, it helped a lot also with PR because like organically I got a lot of uh, covers around yeah, Hijack. Yeah. Um, I did A&E magazine. Esquire. With collaboration uh, Esquire as well. So we did with Xenia, worked with Xenia and Cartier uh, on the covers and, and, and a few other magazines. Everything organic. So, um, you know, it was, it was very positive and I think... On my side, it was great because I managed to yeah. do something of that caliber with, with something that I love to do. And and on the flip side, I'm representing UAE cinema, yeah. which is what I want to do in anything in my life is represent where I come from in the best possible manner. Mm -hmm. And of course, influencing anyone that has a dream to try and achieve it and, you know, just show that anything is possible. Dude, that's, that's dope. And the, yeah. the show was dope. And I remember when it came out, your agency is English. English. Are yeah. they Arabs working there or just English? No, just English. So how did that call go? And I was like, hi, Mohammed, I've got a show for you. <laughs> it is called Hijacked, but yeah. don't worry. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, I think they assume that I just take, you know, in, in England and especially like in, well, every, America, England, when people want to do acting, a lot of people, and I don't say, I don't, I don't, coming, uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. They just want to get the job and, and, you know, but for me, you know, I'm, I'm doing it. I love to do it. But then there's, you know, I do come mm. from where I come from. I do also come from my family. And, and there's certain things that I got to, you know, I, you know, I, re I have to represent my where I come from in the best possible manner. Mm. Of course, I can't be too tight because we're, you know, it's the film industry as well. But uh, representing Arab terrorists yeah. and that's definitely yeah. something I'm not willing to do Catch no matter what the job next was. next movie, Oil, which is huh? coming out in 2025. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I get But that. yeah, I enjoyed doing it. Dude, it was, it was a great a great series and I remember when I was watching it, I was watching it with my wife and I didn't know too much about what was happening when I, you know, I knew that it was a hijack situation. I saw the trailer. The second I saw that it was Dubai, I was so proud, dude. Mm. For many reasons. One, I knew you were going to catch them. 
because I was like, oh, they don't know about Dubai, dude. <laughs> like, mm. we don't mess around here with technology. Yeah. We're going to be the ones that find you. We're going to know exactly where you left and all that stuff. So when I saw, you know, especially the part where you were just kind of like, hold on a minute, something's not right here. I was like, this is so fitting because the way Dubai is globally now when it comes to cyber security, all of that stuff, it fitted perfectly. Mm. And I was like, yeah, you guys picked the wrong country to, to do this from. I was really happy that they were all English. You had the Sudani guy the there, only but thing they is, needed it's, him. It's a, bit, it's a bit opposite, by the way, because the story is mm. that the, the, um, the weapons went through the security of Dubai airport. That's what actually happened. Ah, uh, I so didn't if even you, know. If you so. continue to watch yes, but it. we let you because we wanted to show <laughs> that our computers can <laughs> but, even take your weapons. But, but in real life, yeah, yeah. you know, the security of it's, Dubai it's, dude, and not, not just Dubai, the UAE yeah, yeah. is just on another level. You know? And that's why it's so safe. Uh, and that's why the whole world comes mm. to live here because safety is, I mean, we take safety for granted, mm. you know, growing up and living here. I don't. Until I grew up in London. Exactly. So until you go to yeah. London and places like Paris and yeah. places where like, you know, every other friend has gotten their phone, watch, or something stolen Stone. off you can't them. Leave, you can't leave this. I can go to a beach now, yeah. to a public beach. I can go to JBR, leave my phone yeah. on the beach on the towel. I'll come back, and yeah. there'll be a note next to it saying, I noticed your battery was low. <laughs> yeah, I, I, exactly. I, I used my power bank yeah, to charge no, it up for you. <laughs> <that we're laughs> Do you know here, what I mean? Honestly, yeah. And, and the people yeah. that live here as well, they're, yeah, that, it's very true. It's, it's a beautiful yeah. place, and I don't think alhamdulillah. anything, alhamdulillah, I, I don't think anything's close. Like, right now, yeah. it's very difficult like you have some places like Singapore, but you, you're not allowed chewing gum. So it's like, it, it kind of like, yeah. but like, how did you feel it represented Emiratis and Dubai itself? I mean, you, it's I doing mean, it and watching it after, right? You've, you've yeah, watched I mean, it after. I mean, it's it. a show at the end of the day. So I think in the show itself, I don't think it maybe represented this, you know, the security well mm -hmm. enough because clearly as you watch it, but there would have been no show without um, it. So, you yeah, know, so they had to you make know, some exceptions. Uh, so for me, I think I just try to, you know, you can look at things and be pessimistic or optimistic. And if I'm going to look at this and try and be optimistic, I'm going to look at it and be like, okay, there's an Emirati in it mm. and it's a show. So it's fiction. It's, it, I mean, they can, can be true, but this is mm. not true. So that's okay. And, you know, it's, it's a number one global Apple TV TV show with an Emirati in it. Mm. And that's where I would look at, you know, if but I want to look yeah. at the actual, and uh, no, we shot actually in Madrid. I noticed that, you know, yeah. the part where they go to the house where she's at home. Yeah. I was like, what part of Dubai is this? Yeah. Yeah. This looks strange. But again, we see Dubai a lot. Mission Impossible. You know, there's a Jackie Chan film that was shot here. There's, so we see Abu Dhabi and Dubai a lot in American movies. Yeah. But that's about as far as it goes, right? It doesn't bring in the local actor or see. That's that's, the thing. that's what was good glad, about it. I'm glad you touched on that because I think, you know, there's been so many films coming in, you know, from overseas to shoot here. Until now, I'm getting so many on my own plate. Like, forget where, what everyone else is getting. And I think, you know, just like we have emiratization for you know the private sector, for example, in the film industry, they should have it similarly. A similar situation. For example, if a, if a foreign film comes and shoots here, there should be X amount of mm -hmm. Emiratis working on it for their experience, yes, but also that they can add authentic value. Yeah. You know, for example... Uh, but they should be good actors. Huh? They Not just in good. acting. No, it just um, could be producers. Yeah, um, yeah. Could be any, anyone could be behind the camera, yeah. with directors. Not just in the acting sense. I'm, I'm talking about the film yeah. industry. Um, maybe even more so behind the camera mm. because, you know... It's, Everything, the value I feel trickles. like you're trying to get some work for your brother there. Right? It's like <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but the value trickles from behind until, no, yeah, yeah. you know, so yeah. it's, it's, uh, it's, it's important to consider that. And I think that's something I really do want to push. I'm actually talking to a few agencies now uh, because another thing for actors, there's no acting agency Here, in yeah, the UAE. Yeah. It's all modeling agencies. That's why a lot of people don't. You can't so find I was thinking work. the same. I was always like, I'd love to act in something like that. Um, but then being here, I'd be like, Oh, how would I even go about doing that? So that's why that? I mentioned earlier, like in a, in a place where there's no industry, because again, if a, if a person he, here wanted to get into it, mm. they can't even, they, you, having an agency is a foundation for an mm. actor to sign up and receive jobs, but there's only modeling jobs, you know, mm. that, you know, so you, if you really wanted to be an actor, you'd have to go get an agency from overseas, which is what I did. So there is that niche and opportunity here to, mm. you know, and we have enough talent, not just yeah. in acting, 
in the film industry yeah. in the UAE um even some you know more so than 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 uh, you know overseas very very talented individuals people actually coming from abroad to want to live here as well where these agencies can represent them and you know push them out regionally and internationally you know it doesn't yeah, have I feel to like be. it's needed especially it's needed. when when there's arabic uh words in it as well because yeah. i watch films even yesterday i was watching something with my wife and it had this guy in it and he was supposed to be a muslim you know arab guy and then his mom was like oh you still remember your prayers and he was like yes of course uh bismillah rahman rahim alhamdulillah and i'm like yeah you know in, like, so then he didn't loses, have the it loses the alhamdulillah like, like yeah. an arab would actually say it it loses the authenticity you know? so like for there's example, that one egyptian you know that one egyptian that's in every film mm. he was in iron man the original one and he's no, always like know. screaming in it and he's like, he's got all the parts it's just like in all the western movies no but that's actually even in even like as i'm having conversations now in la uh, london and they're looking for more authenticity mm. you know because people catch that you know so for example mission impossible when you see the qatar agal put on the it's it on was room. done properly yeah, yeah, it was yeah. you know most of the movies you see them it's like it's done so like back horribly, to the future so horribly <laughs> yeah. wrong and it's 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 annoying like as an emirati seeing it or an arab watching it's like really you couldn't put well, they that, have the wrong colors you as well put which that is much weird effort you know, to make sure that, that was right sometimes you know? when it's filmed in iraq and you're like that's a omani thing that they got on their yeah, heads you yeah, know what yeah, i mean it's yeah, not yeah. it's, it's exactly, not right exactly yeah. so it's like there's no continuity you know film yeah. at the end of the day is culture it's stories it's it's and if you're going to do that and you're going to involve another culture or another do it right mm -hmm. you know even if it's an extra do it right put it on his head in the right way make sure he's wearing the right thing you know it's it it's appreciated that mm. you went that extra mile for the for and the viewer respect as well yeah you know what i mean to respect other people because you wouldn't like it if they had an american flag in one of the arab movies and the stars were on the stripes part and the stripes were on that part yeah it, exactly you'd be like yeah. well you don't know the american flag you know yeah 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 um so khattaf again khattaf, yeah another dope you know we needed a hero coming from our parts yeah. i haven't watched that purposely i'm going to be straight with you now because i watched Mm. hijacked not knowing you and i wanted to watch cut off after knowing you because i feel like there would be a much closer connection to the mm -hmm. to the series because i'd be like ah that's that's my boy do you know what i mean as yeah. opposed to i could have done it in research but i was like no i want to wait till after it's i obviously know the tonight. story yeah Sorry exactly tonight. i know the story i know uh najmuddin who helped you with najmuddin the, yeah he's a like, legend there's something yeah. very wrong with najmuddin yeah there, i don't think there's a bone that hasn't been broken in his body to be honest <laughs> he's, <laughs> like, I he's think, a great guy i he's think a, just one gust of wind very hard worker is super coming. talented guy yeah. one yeah. gust of wind bro yeah it's just gonna blow and everything's gonna go like yeah, i don't think so he's held together by <laughs> I one think, I, think he has <laughs> a, I think he's got one more bone that's held he's got a lot together. left in him yeah, yeah. Anyone, even if all the bones are broken right? so he's got a he's a strong guy so let's talk about khatab how did that come about and and, and your feelings about it and etc khatab honestly it was i mean i've done a few things you know i've worked in 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 london for a family office private equity vc amazing experience you know i i had my own gym i've done entrepreneurship i have a company now alhamdulillah and um in film i've done six you know movies tv shows combined khatab by far the best experience i've i've had you know doing a project uh, it was unbelievable it was the lead role mm -hmm. um how it came about um so Abu Dhabi uh, Media, so ADTV, you know, they approached um, uh, my brother Ali, Yasser Harab, uh, about this new show. And um, obviously, I'm, you know, there's there's other actors in the region, so they're looking, you know, and, and mm. Ali's like, you know, he knew that this is really good for me because I already do fighting. So when I did my yoga teacher training, I was training Muay Thai okay. uh, in MAA in Kopangan uh so yeah I, I basically and i did mma when i was younger you know so i'm, I'm also very athletic i was an ex-football player you know i'm, you I'm into sports i do all my own stunts I, I do all this climbing jumping parkour so it's like i can do backflips and things like that so it's like you know it was in his gut he's like you know this is this 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 role is for muhammad now any of the jobs that i did do with my brother i never got off the cuff like i i, I had to audition. audition yeah so um he called me up. He said, "Look, there's this new show called Khattaf, and uh, it's the lead role. But blah 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 blah. You know, m my Arabic is good. You know, I can I can carry a conversation. I understand more than I speak. Uh, you know, but like, 
to but it's my second language mm. my, you know it's, english is my mother tongue i sp- grew up speaking english at home all my life so i think the challenge for me was can i get the arabic yeah. you know it's different you know shooting a whole show 100% in, so um and you can see cuz there's also english in the show and and the english like i didn't even need to look at the script and actually i changed the words in the yeah, script yeah. like cuz cuz the you know what was given we had to you know adapt yeah. and change and tweak to make it more correct yeah, yeah. basically uh, compared to the just english script just grammatically yeah yeah so i just look at it four or five lines read it okay i know what i'm going to say and go ahead and say it on the spot you know but the arabic you know had to you know really you know dive mm-hmm. in and practice but your reading is good in arabic it turned out it, it not as good as it should be yeah i'm but, the same uh, bro if yeah. i'm driving on sheikh zayed road or if i'm driving in abu dhabi and i need to see the sign as the closer i'm getting i'm like shit 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 cuz i can read it yeah. but it takes me so um, much longer yeah. <laughs> i was like tomato he's like what tomato bro that's a tomato it's not the right yeah, one yeah so no yeah. So, uh, so yeah the, the arabic was the um, so yeah he said it's you know you have to work that on that that was a challenge yeah So I was working on that and and then he said also he's like Muhammad your character this time it's not hijack it's not that it's not that it's not you're you're the lead of the show so I I literally started I took this uh, master class of um Samuel Jackson doing a lot of research YouTube videos staring at myself apparently mirror works you mm-hmm. know stand in front of a mirror and act it's first time I was actually doing this like I really wanted this you know and mm-hmm. and I went for four day each day I went like four or five hours in, on the um, you know doing auditions but i noticed every time i went i i heard that there are other khatafs but every time i went they were always auditioning all the other characters but i was the only one there as a khataf okay. there's no one i never saw i saw videos of potential ones but mm. in the actual house i didn't see anyone else so i was getting a bit cocky thinking that i got it and then i heard that they found someone else and i i was like oh no like then i picked up my game i worked harder yeah. worked harder and then the last audition Uh, I got the call and they said Muhammad like uh, no and then I went to TK okay MMA I remember and uh, I spoke to a videographer I told him to make this video I spoke to a Muay Thai coach I made a video to so they can see how athletic I am mm-hmm. that I can fight and do all that then after they saw that video they're like okay but you know it's like yeah. they wanted to pressure it's like they already chose me but they wanted yeah, yeah. to make it 10 like, times harder for yeah, me yeah, yeah. um but to be honest with you it, the role was for me to be honest with you it was uh i felt it like it it it, it kind of felt like my own story to be honest with you mm. but a lot of it has a lot of uh, relation to my own life as well even going to thailand when you know he ends yeah. up in thailand khataf i went to thailand my life transitioned dramatically post that um you know he's into fighting and you know and It was an amazing experience. Mm. And Nej- all choreographed by Naj. Najmedin did the choreography. Now choreography is first time in my life doing choreography. I mm. never did any action and it just, you know, I mean you can ask him but uh, he was he taught me like and he showed me choreography because it's very different, you know, mm. if you're punching, you punch, yeah, course, you know, yeah. choreography you have to get the arm, yeah, yeah. you know, to show the, the angle of the camera yeah, and, and then the reaction yeah. there's this, this is one, two is where the head goes and the shoulder falls, yeah, yeah. three is where the, then you fall body yeah, yeah. flips. and they be like Muhammad do this is this and then number two reaction and then you know and it, and we worked with some you know big guys in Thailand and in the action you know like TJ uh, we did a f- sh- we did a we did a fight scene i did about nearly 30 fight scenes okay and one of the fight scenes was a three and a half minute one take oh wow it's very difficult to do yeah of course very difficult to do um and that was one of the funnest days i ever had to be honest with you shooting that one take and it was intense like you know a lot of it because yes it's choreography but sometimes you miss sometimes you actually do get hit sometimes yeah, yeah. you actually do punch the guy in the face like one but side one I gave TJ an uppercut or the throwing and all that is it's it's tiring yeah. because you're you're there shooting for 10 to 12 hours yeah. you're you know it's Dude uh, I get it you know when people tell me wrestling's fake I'm like okay fair enough yeah you jump off the top ropes and land like that like yeah it's fake it's yeah, there's it's one scene thingy. I do a backflip yeah and And again, it's not about oh whether the actor made a mistake or not. It's not even about mistake. It's like like it could be the camera angle, mm. it could be the lens, it could be the actor, it could be the wardrobe, it could be the art, it could yeah, be yeah. this until everybody combined. I mean, Together. being on a movie set, you know, everybody plays their role. It's the most beautiful thing where you go into a room, it's <clears> empty, <throat> and then they make a set and turn it to life, you know, yeah. and, and make the story. It's such a beautiful feeling. Like a body, right? Everyone's the, like the cells and the blood cells yeah, and all the different yeah, things that come together to make one. I, I love doing it. I love it.
What was the... I actually love doing acting and being in the film industry more than sports and football. What was the la- the worst thing about it for you that you found most difficult, most that most hated part of the whole process? None of it. None of it. All good. None of it. And now, none of it. Going into our next role now, how weird would it be if it's not action? Very. Right. Yeah. Um, we had so I did all my own stunts in the show, and uh, actually, a squire wrote that I'm like the Tom Cruise of the UAE and nice. Jackie Chan of the UAE um, because nobody's really done, you know, um, of this caliber, fight scenes and doing all their own stunts with no double. So I started getting that. And now I started talking to my manager uh, and, and he was telling me that they want to direct me into, you know, their their idea. And a lot of people started saying the... the um, Jason Statham of okay. the UAE. As long as you don't sound exactly the same in every <laughs> film and have the same lines in Actually, every film, you'll be okay. His, his career, so one of his initial movies that he did, uh, which is Snatch, yeah. one of my favorite Amazing. movies. I saw it just two days ago. But that's ago. not I've like any of his other films times. that he's done. Yeah, but I love Snatch. But like, anyway, I, I you know, if, 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 if I can keep doing action, like if, I, if you're going to categorize me as an yeah. actor, for sure it'd be action. Yeah, but Snatch is like... Snatch is a vulnerable Jason Statham. Yeah. It's not the, I'm the beekeeper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like still, every film. He still had it in Got Snatch. an adrenaline. It's like, <laughs> like, he had it. I but didn't like, see the beekeeper actually. Yeah, it's, a, it's a good film if yeah. you just want to watch dumb stuff. It's, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like every one of his other films is pretty much the same thing. It starts off, goes to 90 miles an hour and stays at 90 miles an hour until the credits come. Amazing. You know what I mean? God, Snatch, how much fun he, he was must... synergized amongst so many other great actors and, you know, his role wasn't like the untouchable hard nut kind of thing. He, he, he was vulnerable. Dude. Yeah. He was like, oh shit, what were we going to do? Guy, kind of guy Ritchie. Yeah. I was actually supposed to work with Guy Ritchie. Uh, I, was, I was the last three people in the world to be Aladdin. And not a lot of people oh, know wow. that. wow. Uh, yeah, so I randomly, I had really long hair. I had like a bun back in the day mm. when I was in London. Um, but yeah, that was also an experience. But again, like acting just organically kept falling onto my lap. So then once I started to take it serious, it started to, mm. you know, flourish for me. And and then I realized I enjoyed it more than football, you know. So football, I kept working, 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 knocking on the door. And, you know, just, you know, it was forcefully opening up, mm. you know. And even though I was, honestly, I was, I was quite good at it. But again, you know, you've got plenty of talent. It is... Hundreds mm. of thousands of millions of people that want to be singers, actors, yeah, yeah. athletes. And a lot of the super talented ones, it's right time, right place. Do they have the right agent? Do yeah, they, yeah. you know? And um, there's a lot of people that, are, you know, are capable of playing at the highest of level, but just ne- never got there, you 100%. know? So they don't know the right it's just person, not meant right to be place. for them. Yeah. And there's another, there's another, you know, door that they need to knock on. And I guess that w- that's what happened to me with football. And um, yeah, I'm very happy. But they have to be mentally resilient too, because a lot of people, they get to that stage and, and for example, we'll use football. It's all they know. They get to 21, 22. They don't make it to first team where they don't get their contract. And, and it really like detrimental to their, to who they are. Yeah. They're not that because mentally it, strong to completely like exactly like to change and do everything. It's like, uh, Pre-academy, yeah. like some people, you know, but even a cat, you know, from a really young age, every single day until, mm. and then you don't make it. So it's like, especially with people that don't, like, I don't know your situation. We'll talk about that now, but some people aren't financially stable where they can chase something that they want to do, but still have something to fall True. back on that and too. still have that. that too. So I'm assuming you were lucky enough to have Alhamdulillah, yes. so many things. Yeah. And we'll talk about the family business. Cause when you were telling me about, you know, it being a hundred years, it's turned a hundred. Yeah, 2024, yes. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. Like, let's talk about that. And again, how do you balance these things out? And how do you also balance them out being in the family business and saying to them, hey, listen, uh, I need to go to Thailand for six months because I'm going to film some Uh, fight scenes. Unpaid leave. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Everyone's like, family business? You sure? I'm like, it doesn't work like that. I don't, just because it's a family business, it's still a, you know. Uh, I had to go and, you know, even now, like next week I'm traveling, I had to go and put my leave dates and yeah. everything. It's official. It's like, yeah, yeah. A lot of people think, oh, you work with your family. Okay, you don't, you're not doing yeah, it. But yeah. it's like, it's, it's, it's not like that. Uh, maybe some are, but definitely yeah. not ours. And I wouldn't want it to be that way because then, you know, I just wouldn't feel right. Um, so on the business side, I think, you know, Alhamdulillah, 2024, we just completed 100 years. Uh, it's Mustafa bin Abdullah Investment. It was founded by my great-grandfather, Mustafa bin Abdullah 
um, started off with pearl trading. Mm. And now the company is between Bahrain and the UAE. Uh, we're in real estate, so we develop, you know, residential buildings, compounds, etc., warehouses, okay. etc. And then we are distributors of brands like Beko, Braun, DeLonghi, uh, Chubb Safes, um, you know, B- uh, Breitling Watches in Bahrain, and it's a it's a very large portfolio of of different brands. Uh, we got a security company, we got a IT company, we got a signage company, so we manufacture signages so the louvre museum we did that sign index tower um um and uh we have an ice factory um we have a film production company called boomtown Productions. so we do all the high-end like emirates airlines pepsi commercials uh we did the recent one with manchester city i'm not sure if you saw that one with the balls in the uh, airport falling down yeah, yeah and uh and yeah then we have our family office private equity vc and then on my own personal side, I have my company called Versatile Synergy. We do software development and marketing. I got into that from when I worked in the family office in London. That's that's another story. Mm. Um, and I just became a partner of a fitness app called Fire. Ah, oh, that's the one you were telling me about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, um, it's very interesting. You have your own fitness passport, and as you train, it shows. Just like, for example, you know, on your FIFA ranking, mm. it shows where the, you know, yeah, you're yeah, yeah. good at or not. It's, the more you practice and train, it gives you your own kind of like statistic okay. of your nice. workouts. And you have and all the workouts in that program, then yeah. all the different and ones. Then, and what's nice about it also is that you it's more relatable. Mm. So like the people that you're training with on the app are local uh, talents, for example. It okay. could be like, you know, there are people that are, you know, they're locals. You know, it's not like... A, some random, uh, person, some random yeah. model that's doing it's people that yeah, yeah. you you can relate to you mm-hmm. know um that you may follow or it could be an actor or i'm on it as a yoga teacher and i have my own also program on it um also there's a company also i'm very excited about it's called spot that i've uh, become a partner of and spot basically is uh so it, if you look at it like it's like an airbnb version where so airbnb you go on airbnb and you book um, a residential apartment property, apartment, villa, whatever, for you to stay in. Now, by the name, spot. What spot? Spot is basically where people can monetize a spot, and it's mainly focused for brands and creatives or artists. So, you know, the way people constantly are looking for locations to shoot, today I could have a really nice place in my house that I can so if monetize. if you have a really dope kitchen, then you can yeah, just put the kitchen Yeah, and then you, you put it into the app application, just like your villa on <coughs> Airbnb, but this is a spot. Mm. And then brands and creatives then use that to, you know... And um, you make money off it. Yeah. Everybody makes money, and, and then the the brand and the, the, the brand gets their spot. That's the person cool. that owns the spot monetizes off it. And it's, it's very interesting. So we're, we're building that mm. now. Especially out here because there's so many spots. <laughs> like there's I know so, so many, many spots. There's so many spots everywhere. Bali yeah. is also an amazing place that we're looking at now as well. I mean, there's so many spots. You know, it's like mm. there's a lot of people. You know, have um, you know, you don't necessarily have to have a huge villa. Yeah. You know, it's just utilizing. You might have. Yeah. Things, you, yeah. you might utilize. A cor- For example, you know, a fireplace the, the corner, here. Yeah, the yeah, corner yeah. of this fireplace, and then say, you know, a brand and an <coughs> influencer or an actor or mm. whatever wants to shoot here, and you collaborate, and everybody wins. That works on so many levels because even as a brand, you can you can be like, we have the spot, and you bring the influencer. To the, so it's not like the influencer needs to find the spot. It's like anyone can yeah. find the spot from the four people involved kind of thing. Yeah. And then the person who has the spot wins because they don't care who's coming, whether it's the influencer or the brand or the the sponsor, or whatever. Yeah. But they just have their spot booked. Yeah. That's so that's really cool. So that's that. I mean, those are all in um, like. We haven't fully launched yet, but we're we're almost there. Versatile has been running now for nearly five years. Five years in November. Uh, so Versatile started because so when I worked in London, I worked for a Scandinavian family office, private equity VC, and uh, they were a global media house okay. and investment firm, and they owned like a lot of newspapers and they had territories that they covered, and they digitized all their media assets the ones that they owned and the partnerships that they had wow. and they collected all the data and then they got someone that was specializing in analyzing the data to increase customer acquisition. But then they also used the print because print doesn't make yeah. sales. It builds brands. Mm. So we'd go and get X newspaper, which is a huge newspaper in the region, and I'll put a startup on there, which it's a lot of money for a startup yeah, to course. be next to a blue chip company like yeah. Facebook, <clears throat> Apple, whatever. So we build brands and then we don't put any money 
into the investments. We just leverage the resources. And God's getting free game uh, here. <laughs> uh, so, so, so that's that's. And I got super interested in tech then when we were doing that, um, and realized the you know the value of it, and it's it's ever changing, obviously. So I decided to come to Dubai, and uh, then I started Versatile Synergy. And basically, what it does is is to help startups digitally transform. And if you're already transformed, how can we uh, improve that? And then as you do that, you need to market your business, right? And then we also mm. have our network and our know-how as well as our team to assist with that. So, Especially yeah. there's a lot of people that kind of do similar things here, but just charge so much. And don't I love that you touched provide. that point. Yeah. So, so, so that's the thing. Uh, okay. I'm not going to say, you know, our service is super cheap, but w- there are people here that agencies, especially that, you know, what's happened to the market is high purchasing power. Agencies are aware of that. They come in, set up a company, charge crazy margins. People look at it and be like, okay, this price is good because if it's expensive, it's good quality. Yeah. But and they pay it's it. not, and they pay it. Yeah. And it messes up the whole yeah. system because the reality is that it's not necessarily true. Not because it's good price, it's good mm. quality. You know, so Just because I'm they're trying to have good marketing. That's all yeah, they have. I'm yeah, trying to, I'm trying to change that kind <clears throat> of strategy and build long term relationships with these clients and charge them affordable rates. Mm. You know, you know, still, you know, not super cheap, but still affordable enough for you to then, because in tech, you know, if you build a website, later down the line, you're going to need an app, you're mm-hmm. going to need uh, social media management, you're going to need to, you know, do you uh, digital marketing, yeah. you need your SEO, you, you, you know, there's, it builds up, you know, you're going to need more and more services. If mm. I charge you a crazy amount, I just, it just wouldn't feel right to cr- charge crazy margins. Mm. So uh, for me, I think it's all about, you know, building the right relationships and making that relationship last mm. uh, instead of benefiting right now. With Not a lot uh, of people are doing that, bro. A lot yeah. of people are looking for short turnover and loads. Yeah. Like they don't care. And I've seen that here a lot where people will be like, they'd rather make that 30K for that one month yeah, and then lose you and get another guy who... D- they pull the wool over their eyes, they pay them the 30K and then they lose them and, and they keep doing that and they have a sales but team you, you have to like push for them. You have an ethical responsibility yeah, as well. A lot well. of people so don't like, have that. You know, um, whether it's about the money or not, I just think, you know, consciously you want to feel right when mm. you do things. You wake up in the morning, you go to work, you do a deal, you work, you know. And, um, and yeah, you know, things have happened in business with me in my life where, you know, uh, you said people mess you up. It's happened to me and there's been times where, <clears> you know, I have been... I have been accused of certain things mm. and I laugh about it now because like, like I know exactly how I am when I deal with these certain things and I, I've got the cleanest, con- cleanest conscious, conscious, yeah. Uh, conscious yeah. in this. So I'm like, you know, uh, and I, and, and this is my mo- motto when I run my business, you know what I mean? So it's, and then we go back to our conversation of just realizing that, you know, people will do things in their own way and you just have to like, you know, just let it and be. Just, yeah, and not overdwell or think about things as well. Yeah. Because me and my friend Tamar were talking the other day and we were like, everybody has a Dubai story where somebody's messed them up. Yeah. And you could be somebody's Dubai story, even though you didn't. I wouldn't necessarily you want to be. call it a Dubai story. No, no but yeah, and you know what I mean happens, though, right? Yeah, when yeah, when they're it. here. Yeah. I'm saying that because we're here, right? Yeah. And, and we, we move. But so when people like, come from abroad, they come in and then they call it that, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but but uh, but yeah, I mean, it, it happens everywhere, more so here because I guess, mm. you know, a place with a lot of money attracts yeah. people that are going to come and try and do certain things like that. But I yeah. guess you just have to be careful who but you do But again, with. like how we were speaking before, the cut down, Considering it's such a new country, and when I say new, I'm obviously comparing it to That's very new. <laughs> the rest of the world, right? Yeah. Considering the short amount of time that we've been around, yeah, the way things are locked down to make it so secure and safe, and yeah. you will get people that will come and take advantage, but not the way they that they that do far. everywhere else. Yeah, no, they can't. They, they do don't go I mean? that far. They're no. not going to get away with it like everywhere else. I um, once got sold three Kit Kat chunkies when I thought I was buying three phones <laughs> by three three Irish guys, and I should have known <laughs> when I said to them, "I live down that way. It's a one-way road." And they said, "This car drives down one-way roads." Then I should have listened. Then I should have listened. But yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean we're super blessed. I mean what the leaders have done here. You know, it's oh, it's crazy. It's, yeah, I mean, from the safety to the opportunity, I mean, you know, how they look after the locals and a lot of people think, you know, you know, we're looked Amazing. after in a way, but it's also the foreign foreign people, the foreigners that come in and, you know, make this place their home. 
they make this place their home for a reason, mm. you know. So, uh, and there's there's it's a very attractive place to come in and 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 live, invest, and 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 settle, you know. So, you know, it's it's my home. It's my home forever, and I'm I'm gonna have my kids here, my grandkids here, my you know. Inshallah, yeah. yeah, I I I have my bases. Obviously, I, the England is one. I've, That's uh, for a holiday for a I've, week or two. I've but, fallen in love with Bali a little bit, so yeah. that might be another. Zanzibar, I'm telling you, I'm changing your life right now. Take my <laughs> advice, dude. Zanzibar, we'll 100%. check it out. Check so, it out. again, how do you silence the mind? Because, and I mean that in a way where you have your fingers in so many pies. How do you get organization and and some kind of direction in that? Because, a they say men can't multitask, which I don't yeah. think is true because, you know, we do a lot of stuff. Yep. I'm doing jujitsu once, trying to breathe and choke someone out and stop being choked out and, <laughs> and answering your phone and taking a picture. Like, how do you kind of do that? Because it's a lot that you're doing and there's a lot at stake as well. Where it comes to the family business, there's a reputation there at stake, right? It's not just like you can mess up and just be like, all right, for whatever, I don't work for them anymore no, and I go not. somewhere else. So No, of course not. How do you deal with the pressure? How do you silence the mind? How do you kind of keep your mental health safe with all these things? You know, the funny thing is the pressure is not really external. I, I put a lot of pressure on myself because of, you know, the direction I want to, you know, I'm heading, I'm heading to, and mm -hmm. I know I'm, I'm going there. And, you know, um, I know what I'm capable of and what I want to deliver to my family. Alhamdulillah, yes, I'm, you know, I, you know, I come from a family business, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I want... I want, um, and and I'm very grateful for all that. But I think, you know, one day I want to have my own family, and I want to be able to cater to them at, you know, best way possible. You know, so how do I? Uh, to be honest with you, I, I'm not going to sit back and tell you, oh, yogi, I'm, you know, I still the mind and I meditate, and I no, I'm, I I go through my ups and downs as well. Like I, you know, I, it's it's uh, sometimes, you know, I guess, you know, it's stressful. But I think. What's helped me a lot in recent time is my internal dialogue and how I catch myself. I'm fine tuning myself every day is how mm. I catch myself talking to myself in the wrong way. Or I notice, you know, a thought pattern happen and I think, no, why am I thinking? Uh, why am I why am I thinking like that about someone? Mm. You know, that it's it's I'm just making assumptions in my head. You know, it's just it's just. The dialogue, that internal dialogue, is what, what kind of gives you more peace and less stress. Is is that to be honest with you, and and it's also when you're more accepting and and trusting the process, and also being like a bit more faithful and 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 believing that you know it's in God's hands, you know. So you're you're kind of like tr putting that trust as well into mm -hmm. God. You put you do the best you can and trust that God will give it to you. Like yeah. the door shut for me with football. Of course, I got upset. Put trust worked hard i didn't stop you never stop you just mm. keep going and uh and the door is open you know so it always does mm. you keep going your future son at 10 years old and 20 years old these are two conversations you're having with him mm. which advice do you give him at 10 years old and which advice do you give him at 20 years old let's start with 10 first you're having a conversation with him you're sitting down now but you want to say something to him that's that's you know that he's going to remember and try and take. What do you say to the 10-year-old? I mean, 10's a bit young huh, for yeah. him to digest but, but I think that's very important because also I think a lot of people want to force stuff to, for a 10-year-old that they don't need to be dealing with. Wait, I'm not going to answer for you. What would I advise my 10-year-old? Um, enjoy your life. You know, be kind. And uh, don't let others' opinion of you define who you actually are. Um, know your worth. Know your potential. More, Very importantly, also know where you come from and what you represent. Um, and, uh, and put trust in God with everything that you do. And make sure your intentions are clean. And do not stop. Mm. Don't stop. Stopping is like the enemy of everything in life. Like... I saw this, uh, actually posted on my story today, Sheikh Zaid, Allah rahmah, God rest his soul. Uh, he was talking about um, the value of a person is in his, is, is, is in his action, is, 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 is what you, the things that you do, is how, you know, are you a doer? 
then then you have a value you know if you're somebody who just sits back and talks and there's you you know what i mean so and even if doors shut just so long as you are a doer which means you won't stop and you keep pushing then you will start to increase your value as a human being and because those experiences actually those hardships those doors shutting on your face those they 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 suck but essentially they are what create you and build you to become a that best version or uh, unleash that human potential that you have nice yeah 20 year old 20 year old uh, would it be the same message or would you adapt it would you be like listen there's some snakes around the place <laughs> <laughs> watch uh, your back <laughs> um honestly uh I guess I guess I would advise them sim- quite similarly, uh, depending on the twenty-year-old as well. Uh, it, it, you know, every, you know, every person and well, their it's experience the same twenty-year-old that you do. gave. This is that was the, the ten-year-old that you one. gave that. Yeah, but what has he done from ten to twenty, and what is he he's stressing your on? Your son, bro. You do. You do. What is he stressing you on? Your I don't have him yet. <laughs> inshallah, one inshallah. day. But uh, but uh, honestly, like, just you know, be happy. You know, and 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 I think I think a lot of people take things. Um, like you know we're human beings at the end of the day you know we can we can be happy we can be sad we can we can be angry we can lose our temper we can we can deal with things in the way that we shouldn't be dealing with them you know so i think my only advice is you know to just you know be happy and if in any moment things are going to make you react or or show a way of you that is not you which is maybe like losing your temper or like you know being down is okay. I think I think more is in is in your self control. I think mm. at twenty, is in your self control. Make your mistakes, but be controlled. Don't. Rep- that's that's the important part. I would I would want you to make mistakes on your own because I I'm not here to tell you that I'm perfect. I'm still making mistakes and mm. they will keep going. But like, you know, I think it's it's very important at that age is to have some sort of awareness of the things that you're doing for yourself and what it's going to give off to the world and yourself, and the level of self control you have when you do certain things or lose your temper or, 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 you know, so it's, it's just like where I'm at right now. And I'm not saying I'm in the, I'm perfect, you know, you know, I'm far from it, but I'm just very happy with where I'm at right now is that, you know, um, and I'm glad we're actually having this conversation because, you know, this is, this is the direction I'm in my life where I do, I do want to settle down. I do want to have kids and, and, and I can't wait for it. But Mm. I think as I'm doing that, I need to constantly day in, day out, fine-tune yeah. myself to continue to, you know, deliver the best possible version because one day when I do have a kid, maybe this advice changes into mm. something better. I don't know, but for me right now, this is this, and it's a question right I mean, on the spot. So. No, 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 but <laughs> inshallah, bro, being a father is, is the most yeah. blessed thing I could ever, I couldn't recommend anything. Like even my boys, I have twin boys now, they're going to be inshallah. seven um, in October. And I've started sneakingly telling them stuff like, so I'm preparing them for things. But the way I do it, I was like, oh, guys, you're going to be seven. And a lot of things change when you're seven. Mm. So it's a big age. And, you know, of course, in, in, in our culture, seven is when they start learning about Dean. Seven is when they start to kind of, you know, change. And I'm like, oh, there's some changes coming. It's going to be awesome. That you're going to, you know, your power. Oh, my, you're going to have so much responsibility because you're going to be twice as strong yeah. and you're going to be like, I'm starting to tell them that your brain is going to double the speed and stuff like that. So we have to prepare together, guys, and stuff like I'm kind of slowly doing it so that when I do come with those kind of things, they know that it's not like a shock to them. Like, hey, Quran, go, <laughs> like yeah, kind yeah, of thing, yeah. you know, so I'm slowly trying to, to bring these things. And it's just it's an incredible thing, dude. And being a father without hitting as well. Because I used to get licks growing up. <laughs> licks for licks on top of licks, bro. I grew up on licks. And I decided I'm breaking that cycle. Yeah. The patience it's given me and the way, the workarounds that it's given me internally. Because it's very easy to be like, yeah, no, <laughs> and just hit. But that doesn't solve anything. Yeah. Like soon it stops hurting. And on top of that, they they don't respect it anymore. Like this, it's like, okay, this guy's going to hit me or whatever. But the the patience, it grew inside me when I'm like, it's a have psycho- you, have you psychological become, yeah, yeah like like have you become let's talk about this like do you know what i mean yeah and it changed me as a person it does yeah, as well yeah do you know what i mean when you so play it like that it's a it's a it's a beautiful thing and mm. i can't wait till till you have kids like honestly yeah, inshallah. It's, 
inshallah second to skydiving is really cool no, i'm yeah. joking no, it's, actually it's i actually skydive as well Bro, really I, I, I got my license uh Yeah. The FAA. A while ago, 2012 AFF. AFF, sorry, yeah. yeah. AFF, yeah. yeah. I, I want to do mine 18, so bad. 18 jumps. I didn't do my A license, but it's, yeah. it's amazing. Right? I love it. Beautiful. Yeah. My grandfather is actually a paratrooper in the World War. My mom's really. Yeah. See, we have to talk. We go uh, off camera. Yeah. We got also a, we got was a, a goalkeeper, which camera. I didn't know about. <laughs> you yeah. see, that's where you get it from, bro. <laughs> yeah. That's where you get it. Yeah. What is it? That, uh, there was one other thing that I wanted to make sure. Ah, a bit morbid. This one. You pass away. One sentence that you would like people to say when describing you. Could be a couple of words. Could be whatever. But if if I was like, oh, Muhammad, oh, I knew him. He he was. Well, how would you like people to describe you? In one sentence. Uh, God, it's a tough one to be honest with you. But I've been like real someone that was down to earth someone that was real um you know someone that when they came into the room you know you felt like you're around good energy clean yeah clean is good one yeah clean real yeah yeah is there anything that you felt like we've missed out i told you the time goes quick When I was telling you four hours, you were like, <laughs> "Why has it been four hours?" No, 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 but it's been probably about two almost. So, like, <laughs> I was telling you, you were like an hour. I was like, an hour will go like this, bro. Um, I'm sure it'll come to my mind that there was some things. This always happens, you yeah, know. Yeah, right. but, We can do an episode I, two down the yeah, line. It's not a problem. Maybe, but uh, but honestly, I'm, I'm, you know, we literally just met yeah. properly mm. from this conversation. Yeah, you know? exactly. Like before we like when we first got in touch. You're like purposely not trying to have a yeah, conversation yeah. with me yeah. until we sat down. So, but better, no? Yeah, yeah, it's nice this way actually. Yeah, yeah I liked it, and um, it's a pleasure meeting you. And thank Dude, you for having me on the show. Just, yeah, I'm really for sure this it. is something that's going to continue behind the camera, yeah, off camera, 100%. and stuff. And I'd just like to thank him for all the sponsors that I got for the show from all his family businesses. Now <laughs> we have uh, AC sponsor, <laughs> we have a warehouse. New warehouse will come next week. What else did we get out of it? <laughs> yeah barbecue guys I'll, i'll send you the location for that um dude it's been an absolute pleasure thank you um you've made us proud by by us seeing you on the screen and representing so well um and inshallah so much so much more to come sure. i look forward to seeing your next project do you have a next project that you can't talk about or you can talk about now um and can i we're, we're, it with you we're hoping <laughs> we're ho well for sure we'll we'll arrange that but we're hoping on a khatab season two okay and um there's a couple of movies that i'm talking um feature films I'm talking nice. to now so um nothing set in stone yet but uh you know looking forward I'm flying I'm flying to Bali actually <laughs> next week so I'm looking forward to that so it's like a yeah. work week this week fly off and then come back and back on the grind inshallah all the but best thank you for having the world, me the world chichi and everything in it <laughs> <laughs> guys we'll see you next time boom that was lovely having you